You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Hello, this is the Christian Business Podcast, and I am super excited to have Shay Bynes on the program today. Um, I just met her for the first time, and I'm so excited that she's here. I'm actually um, going to let you start by just introducing yourself and telling sure. us a little bit about you. Yeah. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Shay Bynes. I live in South Florida in the United States. And I call myself the chief fire igniter of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, where we inspire, teach, and mentor entrepreneurs all around the globe to do business in partnership with God so that they can experience his best and have a greater kingdom impact through the work that they do. And so we are about, gosh, we'll be eight years old this year. I'm a wife of 20 years to the, uh, the man I met when I was 16 years old in high school. We've been together ever since. And we have three daughters ranging from toddler to college. So we have a wow. very unique dynamic going on in our household <laughs> that keeps us <just> young. <laughs> so a toddler, meaning how old? She just turned three, like a couple Oh my weeks gosh, ago. that's the cutest age yeah, ever. Yeah, she turned three. She was, she was my 40th birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> Born five days after my 40th birthday. And then my oldest is in college. Uh, she's 19. And then I have one right in the middle in the sixth grade and she will be 12 next oh, week. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's so cool. So thank you so much for being here. I would love to start at the beginning because my audience, most of my audience wouldn't, wouldn't know you. Right. So just tell me a little bit about your background and how you got to the point, you know, that you realized that there was a different way to do business. How did God, you know, what were you doing and how did God wake you up to that? whole idea yeah. of kingdom entrepreneurship. Yeah, a series of crazy encounters with God. So my story basically is my background is in technology. So I went to college for computer science. When I started my career, I started working at IBM as a software engineer. I was working my career there. That started in 1999. And the entire time that I was there, I always had a business on the side because I had this affinity toward business. But I was also doing really well in my corporate career. And so I had this plan <laughs> that I was going to work a corporate career for a certain number of years. And then I was going to transition into full-time business, although I had no idea what that was going to look like or what I was going to be doing. And none of this, by the way, had anything to do with God. At this point in my life, it was, I have plans, Lord, please bless them. It wasn't like, Lord, what are your plans for me? It was, those were not the conversations at that time in my life. <laughs> And so, although I have been saved and in church forever. <laughs> I, trust me. You understand what I'm saying. That's my story. Not have a personal relationship <laughs> with the Lord like that. And so, so anyway, it was in 2009. This was now, I had almost been at my job for 10 years. I had had an upward moving career there. Where things were going great. And business was increasing steadily, you know? What but, was the business, by the way, Shay? I'm sorry. Yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. So the very first thing I did in business, I was selling things on Yahoo auctions, which doesn't exist anymore. You know, it was the eBay before eBay, right? Yeah. So I was selling things online, hard to find items online. That was the first thing that I did in business. After that, I was running an online community for um, alumni of a particular group of colleges called Historically Black Colleges and Universities, HBCUs. And I had that business with a group of friends. So we did events. We had online community and all of that stuff. And then MySpace made us irrelevant. And so, so we stopped doing that after that. So I had all kinds of things. And then I went into real estate investing. And at the time that I'm describing in my life that I'm about to go into, I was focused on real estate investing with my husband right here in Fort Lauderdale. And I think at that time I'd also started, I was blogging about my real estate investing in ventures. So I'd become an accidental teacher in real estate investing as well, just by sharing the journey that I've been having over the years. So in 2009, I'm sitting here and I'm writing out my goals for the year. I always like checked in with the Lord to say in January to say, hey, here's my goals, Lord, you know, bless them in your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's kingdom business, right? right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, and even the word kingdom business, I had no concept, no concept. Right, yeah, yeah. So I, but at that time I'm writing down what are the goals on my heart. And I heard for the first time a direction from him to me, as opposed to me to him. Mm -hmm. And it was, you're going to leave your job by June of 2010. And I heard that and I'm like, I don't know how that's supposed to be. 
I wanted that, but I had no idea what that looked like. And it seemed impossible based off of where I was in my career and where I was in business. But I wrote it down. And all throughout that year, I kept getting these nudges. Like I just, all, all of a sudden I'm feeling all these Holy Spirit nudges, you know, <laughs> and I'm just like, I know I'm supposed to go, but it makes no sense. And so I did what a, a software engineering project manager type mind does. And I created this very wise plan and list of all the things that needed to be accomplished before I would step out on this thing that God apparently seemed to be calling me to that I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And so all year I'm getting these nudges and feeling like it's time for me to go. My husband had already blessed it. Say, if you feel like that's where the Lord's guiding you, I'm like, thank you for the blessing of that. But that makes no sense because I had this checklist of things that really need to be accomplished before I leave. All of them, most of them had to do with finances. Yeah. And so so anyway, I got to the point that I was so uncomfortable, I started praying and asking God for them to let me go. People were l being laid off left and right, even in my department at that time. And I was like, if they'll just lay me off, then I'll get a year's worth of severance. And then I can go and all of the things I'm mostly concerned about would be taken care of. But I got a promotion. Uh, <laughs> <a> layoff. Because <laughs> he's got jokes. <laughs> so I go into, fast forward, I go into the next year. I'm at this business conference in Orlando in April. And I heard from God like I had never, ever, ever heard from God before. And I have not heard from him like this since. I was ironing my clothes and I was getting ready to go to the last session. And I heard one word and it was go. And it was like, it was like a go that I felt and heard everywhere. Like, it, I, I won't say it was an audible voice, but if I, the closest thing to an audible voice I've ever experienced from God was in that moment. And I knew what the go was about. So I called my husband. I was like, babe, I got to go. And he's like, well, I told you you could go whenever. So the next day I go home, I called my boss and I was like, I don't know how to tell you this, but I've got to go. Like, I got to get my 30 day notice. And he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, to do what? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, okay, you know. Yeah, enjoy. You know? <laughs> so, Good luck with that. Good luck with that, right? So interestingly enough, Christian, it wasn't until months later that I realized that my last day in my corporate career was May 31st, 2010, which was one day before June. He said, you're going to leave your job before Whoa. June 2010. And I left one, my last day. My last official day was one day before then. So after I left, I freaked out because this was the first time I had ever done anything out of a obedience that didn't make sense to me that made no sense and so I went into this crazy grind of just trying to make everything happen I threw everything I had every time anything that I had into trying to grow my real estate business the consulting I was doing in real estate and I worked for six months like a crazy person it was a grind and I was making this much progress and I finally heard and it's not like I didn't know what I was doing I knew what I was doing I'd been doing it for years and had been growing now I had all the time in the world to do it, but it was like God put his hand on that thing. And so about six months in, I hear him say to me, because I hadn't been talking to him about it, by the way, I took things in my own hands. <laughs> and he said to me in that moment, are you done yet? And I was like, yeah, because this isn't working. And it was at that moment that I started to just turn my heart and even my ear toward, <laughs> okay, you've called me out. I don't know what for. The only thing I know to do is what I'm doing. And so I'm just going to keep doing this, but I, want, but I want to learn more. Like, I want to know what is on your heart concerning me. And that was the beginning of my adventure in that. So then you fast forward two years, and one of my real estate buddies, now I'm getting to Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurship, two years later, I get a real estate buddy of mine who says, I met this woman, and I feel like I'm supposed to introduce you. And I said, okay. He introduces us. I talked to this woman and she was great. She was a coach, a business coach. And I couldn't figure out why he was so adamant that we meet. It was like he had a holy burden for us to meet. And she said at the end of the conversation, I have this client and I really feel like I'm supposed to connect you to her. And so we hop on the phone with the woman she connects me with. Her name's Antonina Gear. We hop on the phone and this woman, it was like I, I knew it was a divine connection. And as we were growing in friendship over that, that, that next month, I said, I feel like there's a really specific reason why we met and I have no idea what it is. And she goes, I've been feeling that way too. And I said, well, let's pray about it and come back and see. So she was a business owner. I was a business owner. We came back a week. She started talking about something. I'm like, it's none of those things. I'm like, but it's something. Let's, let's pray and let's come back. We did this three rounds, Christian. Yeah. And on the third round, she goes, there are these words in my journal I wrote them down. God gave them to me. I have no idea what it's about, what it means, what he wants me to do with them. Nothing. But the words are kingdom driven entrepreneur. And when she said those words, I said, and this was clearly just like a word of wisdom by the Holy Spirit because I had no idea what I was talking about. She said kingdom driven entrepreneur. And what blurted out of my mouth 
on this phone call was that's a community, that's a movement, and it starts with a book. Mm. And she's like, oh. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know what a kingdom driven entrepreneur was. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't have a concept of kingdom driven entrepreneurship. I knew those words were very intentional, kingdom driven entrepreneur, and I didn't know what that meant. And frankly, neither did she. And so for the next six months, it was me and this essential stranger that had become like these close sisters just sitting at the feet of Jesus, like, what does this mean? Okay, it's king. Okay, help us understand more of the kingdom. Okay, help us understand what the driven aspect is, kingdom driven. Okay, we know what an entrepreneur was. You know, so it was really pulling these pieces together. And here, six months later, now we're in 2012, at the end of 2012, me and this essential stranger come together, start something, a business, business partners with the funniest operating agreement ever, because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and so we're just going to start because we don't, all God's given us is it's a community, it's a movement, and it starts with a book. Man, that was a word from the Lord that we worked for like two years. So we started the community and the movement with a book around kingdom-driven entrepreneurship, which was literally like six months of just sitting with the Lord on this thing and walking things out in obedience on the way to doing something called kingdom-driven entrepreneur. It's a ridiculous, <laughs> crazy, God qualifies the called kind of story because we didn't even know at the moment what those words actually meant. Now that was years ago. She's not involved in operations anymore. She's a dear friend. But that it's funny that my journey of becoming a kingdom driven entrepreneur, ironically, but not ironically, because it's God, came from the experience of saying yes to an assignment to start a community and a movement that starts with a book called Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. I so I never came into this like, hey, here I'm an expert. Let me go teach you how to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur. It was God called us to this thing and we're figuring it out. And as we're learning and we're exploring and we're learning things and we're growing in God, we're sharing, you know? And then over years, now people look at, oh, I'm like, no, I'm never an expert. I'm never, I'm never an expert. Yeah. Yeah. But I have grown in leaps and bounds over the past several years on walking this thing out with God, working by the power of his grace, understanding more of the kingdom, what that looks like in business, how to release that into other entrepreneurs around the world. It's been that journey, but it started with just two folks that were just said yes to God over and over again, having no idea what they were doing. Oh my gosh. I love this. So uh, for background, I actually, um, a dear friend of mine, Deborah's uh, heard uh, uh, Shay speak on Facebook or something and said, yeah, you have to meet this powerful lady. She sounds just like you. And the first part of your story, it's like you were telling my story. So my spirit's <laughs> just like right up here because I was like, how does she know that? <laughs> she, it's, the, it's almost like the exact same story you know, really successful in business. And mine's a little different in that I, I got married. I was in New York city <clears throat> loving that life. And uh, my fiance, Dan, uh, is in Texas. And I just went to the CFO and said, and, and I, I wanted to leave because there was, you know, some stuff there, but I didn't have that next thing. But my right. whole career had just been, okay, God, I'm doing this. Bless it. Because you love me. I'm your daughter. So you're with me, right? You're yes. with me, right? God, God uh, listens to the plans of man and laughs, right? Yes. So, um, and I, did, I had no real, I was like, I'm a Christian and then I'm a business person. My name's Christian, but that's just a coincidence. <laughs> now, I don't, you know, I behaved, you know, but I have to be in the world, not of yes. the world. So I'm just doing my thing and um, was just thought that was the way it was supposed to be having these, you know, do, do separate lives. And um, just like you, my C CFO was like, so what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just leaving. Where are you going? I don't know. And for people like us who like to have days, weeks, years, in a meticulous planner day. like what this is how i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna get this i mean that kind of <laughs> risk like, mitigation strategy <laughs> <laughs> exactly because i'm an engineer too yeah um that's not something the lord the lord i think is it really enjoying watching us struggle with this and i did yes. that thing when i got here i'm doing everything because i'm trying to recreate the sense of success in the old paradigm Right. Which is workspace. And, and so I'm going to pay attention because the second thing I want to say is, um, so we have the same story. So what I love too is your shirt and the thing in the background that says grace over grind. Yes, grace over grind. I That's love the name that. Of one of my books. I love that. And you see it's in the background too, because what she was describing is that journey to that revelation, which yes. is 
you can grind and grind, but when there's no, when you were saying, I'm like, but there was no grace on it. And I have found that when you are, the, the part, one of the reasons why it's so important to operate on your scroll um, is because there's a grace over it. Yes. And, and especially when you're talking about capable people, because you're like, I can make this work. Yes. I oh, can no, research and I've I can figure this. it out. I can do this, right? I've done yes. this in the past. And that is one of the biggest handicaps for kingdom um, entrepreneurs or, or want to be entrepreneurs is your abilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it doesn't provide a space for grace. Yeah. There's, it's almost like, I mean, I, I remember what it was like. It's interesting. I had such an interesting journey of growing in my identity in him after, after saying like my growth came in the, in the context of business and the context of saying yes to the assignment was my growth in him. And it was so interesting how my greatest strengths as I saw them at that time where, okay, I'm a logical thinker, I'm analytical, I'm strategic, um, I can figure things out, I can get it done. Like those were, those were my gifts. I could, you know, so I, and I leaned on those gifts and they had served me very well for years in school and my college years and in my career. So I leaned into those gifts, right? And then when I said yes to this assignment, it was like he made my gifts, uh, almost worthless in the beginning because what he was calling me to do were things that I had never done before on a topic that I didn't have this great revelation and experience with. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you how crazy it was for me. This was so crazy. In our very early time, this was in like, I maybe mean, we were about six months in, he had put on our heart that we needed to do a, because we just had a community online at that time. So there was like a couple thousand people in a Facebook group or something. And eventually it was like, we need to get together face to face. Now, I, I don't like to just make up stuff like let's do an event just to do an event. And it has to be marketed. So we're like, okay, Lord, so what's the purpose of this event? Are we, are, what are we sharing? What are we teaching? What does this look like? Are there speakers? The whole thing. He says, they're coming to encounter me. What does that mean, Lord? Like, we're doing an event. Like, we need to put a schedule, an agenda. We need to market it, put bullet points, the whole thing. He says, put together a schedule. No agenda, a schedule. Okay. So it was literally like day one, um, from this time to this time, like session A, like opening session, worship session A, session B, <laughs> session C. We had no details. And that was very challenging for me because it made no sense. And I kept going back to him and saying, no, but what do you want us to put in here? What are we marketing? They just want to encounter me. Okay. So, but what are we going to say in the email? Like, how are we, what are we putting on the website? You know? And so we would, we actually marketed an event with a schedule and no agenda Christian other than, hey, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurs are getting together in Phoenix, Arizona for three days and we're going to worship and some other stuff and here's so the schedule. <laughs> and like almost 40 people flew in from all over the United States. A couple were local, people flew in from, but we still to the day, I mean, literally in the, in the weeks coming up, we still had no idea what was going to happen at this event. And I'd say, Lord, and this was hardest for me. It was hard for my partner too, but it was hardest for me. And I remember just saying, but Lord, I just need like a basic agenda because I don't even know what to say in front of these people. I hadn't even prayed in front of a group of people, Christian. I prayed in front of like my family, a couple from friends one-on-one, -on -one, but not in front of a group of people. Like I was so in my mind, useless in this stuff. And so he'd give me visions. He was giving me visions of things that were going to take place at the event, but it would just be a picture of something. And I'd have no idea. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? I don't, I can't, I can't put a strategy around that picture that you just showed me, you know, and it just didn't make any sense to me. So literally went to Phoenix with no agenda other than a schedule and some journals. Cause he had given us the instruction to get them journals. And can I tell you those next three days, it was almost like an upper room, book of Acts, the craziest encounter in God experience from the next few days that we still see the fruit of in the lives of those who were there, including ourselves. And, but it was so crazy because for me, that made no sense. So it was like going to boot camp. Like, Lord, it's like, look, you're going to have to learn how to walk this thing out with me. This thing that you're talking about, this thing that you're going to you know, mentor people through, like, I'm going to take you through boot camp. So it was like going through, there was no, everything that was my gift. Everything that was my gift was essentially made useless for the first several months while he focused in on me of who I am as his daughter, 
who I, who, he focused all on the intimacy aspects and the following him and hearing his voice, heeding his voice and being courageous enough to move according to his voice and all my gifts were useless. And after I grew in that, which was probably about a year and a half, seriously, and this is after Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur started, this is a year and a half into Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. Then he starts like all of a sudden now the gifts become useful again. And now it's like, now you know how to surrender those to me. You know how to flow with me. So now all of these are gifts. These are good. This is all goodness. And all of a sudden the gifts became valuable again, <laughs> you know? oh, this is but, so wonderful. but not more valuable than his presence, uh -huh. not more valuable than his voice, you know, not more valuable than his power. All these things that I actually had no real experience or even grid for the things that I experienced. Man, he'd have me, he'd say, go tell this person, this person. I pray something, the person's fall, fall, fall down on the ground. And I'm like, what's happening? I was just the most ignorant. Like, I just didn't understand these things I had not experienced. And these people are laid out on the floor. I'm like, I've seen that happen in church before. You know, it was, it was, it was so wild. It became like a deliverance experience for so many people in so many ways. And I was literally in the midst of something that I had, I had never experienced before in my entire life but yet supposed to be the leader of the event. Oh my God, I love this. I love this story. I love it not just because of what it illustrates, you know, but for people who may have um, this as their calling or something else as their calling. One of the things I have a, a business class as well, just one so far, God's been getting me to write another one and I've been kind of dragging my feet on that, but, uh, <laughs> but um, it's that doing things uh, in uh, kingdom business is actually counterintuitive. It doesn't make yeah. sense. It, 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 usually, it, it doesn't drive with the natural way in which uh, sometimes one, right. you know, you would do business. And what I um, love about this, you know, your example of this kingdom driven entrepreneurship is in so many ways, what God calls us to do and calls us as in terms of our identity feels so much broader, bigger, and um, hard for us to attain because it's not necessarily what we're operating in right now. Right. So the faith that it takes to just step out and be, it's like faith and obedience. Cause what people With want everything. is they want skills and abilities. Yes. And really is faith and obedience. Yes. That creates the grace over grind. Right. And that's yes. counterintuitive because that's not the way we show up in all, most other parts of our lives. We show that's up right. with capabilities. We show yes. up with abilities. And so it's the, the faith and the obedience provides the grace, right, over the grind, which is what you were saying. And um, you're stepping out on kingdom-driven entrepreneurship when you didn't even actually know what it is, you know, not being a guru right. or an expert. But that was like, <laughs> right. I'm doing something I've never heard of. You know, it's like right. someone's never taken a science class. I'm a computer science engineer. Are you really? Well, that's right. what God said. But that's what... When you look at Moses, when you when you look at people in the Bible, he's calling people Abraham, the father of many nations, with yes. no children. Yeah, that is how God. That is the counterintuitive nature of the kingdom. That's it. That's and so it. I love it. But but the question is not to you, Shay. The question yeah. is to us and our audience: Will you respond to what God has called? Not yes. to what you have, not to what you believe, not to what you, your abilities are, what you believe about yourself. Will you re respond to that call of what yes. God has said and spoken over your life? Yeah. So that's, yeah. So it's, that's wonderful. One of the, one of the key things for me, because everyone has different kind of person, you know, everyone has a different personality. For me, the thing that it took, so it was almost like in the beginning, when I'm saying things like people are like it's so crazy, like you okay, you heard God and then you left your job. That's crazy. But it was because it was so radical, I couldn't deny it was him. And I wasn't doing it out of even a healthy identity of who I was in him. I was doing it out of like reverential fear of the Lord. Like, no, I know God spoke. Like, I know what I can't deny. It. I'm not even gonna pretend like I know that that's not God. He's been talking to me for like a year about this. And so I left, but it wasn't out of just like a, oh, because he has great plans for me. Oh, because I wanna be faithful. It wasn't out of that. It was reverential fear of the Lord. The shift that happened for me was I had this, um, I had this crazy encounter with God of the love of God that broke down all of my, all of my preconceived notions of, of how I needed to show up and who I was. And this was, and it's interesting, this, and this is such a key part of my story because it's a part of that changed everything for me. And this was right before we launched Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. So I already said yes to it back in the March of 2012. And I'd walked out this thing of writing this book and sitting with this stranger who'd become my dear friend and over these six months. But two months before we launched, I was at this women's conference back in Orlando. 
crazy stuff happens to me in Orlando. I'm back at this conference in Orlando and I had this encounter with the love of God at the conference. And when the pastor was asking, I knew there was more to God than I had been experiencing. And I knew in order to do this assignment, whatever it was, because I didn't really understand what it was, that I was going to need to know him in a greater capacity, you know? And I remember just that was my heart going to this conference. And I remember the pastor was talking about how God gives us eyes to see things the way he sees them and ears to hear his voice. And, and she's like, I'm going to pray for all the ladies. Here's like a thousand ladies in the room. She asks us all to sit down and she's praying over us. And she's asking women after she prayed, she was asking women, like, if God spoke something to you, you know, stand up. If, if God, if you, if he showed you something, stand up. And so all these women are standing and I'm upset because like, I hadn't felt like I heard or seen anything. And I'm like, I'm hungry for more of God. And so we stand up and she's sharing her final words. And in the middle of her sharing her closing words, I fell down on the floor and nobody had touched me. Like no one was even talking to me. No, no one had touched me. I fall on the floor on the high heeled shoe of the girlfriend I came to the conference with. And I couldn't move my body at all. I was trying to get up off the floor and I couldn't move. And I knew it was God because I it was just, I was just starting, starting to feel really self-conscious. I'm like, these people are going to call 911 or think there's a medical emergency here because I couldn't move. And so when I realized I was not going to be able to move because there was a big fat angel sitting on my back, <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, God, like, what is it? Because clearly you want to talk to me about something. And he gave me the first open vision I'd ever had. And I was on a playground. And wow, I'm in storytelling mode today. I was on a playground and it was, um, I was a kid and it was like, you were playing the trust fall game where you fall backward and you trust the person behind you is going to catch you when you fall. And I went backward, but at the last second, I put my arm back like this to brace myself for the fall. And I heard a voice say to me, that's what you do to me. Mm. And I was like, silent, you know, really convicted, not condemned though. And he said, do you want to know why you do that? And I said, yeah. He said, because you have absolutely no idea how much I love you. And then I was able to get up off the floor. And for like the next, like that night, the next week, the next two weeks, I just kept having an encounter with God after encounter with God. And it was him just like overwhelming me with his love. And it was that revelation in my heart that was like, okay, that's when I knew I am his daughter. He is my father. He has my absolute best in mind. Everything that I'm saying, I was saying yes out of love and out of trust, like real trust mm -hmm. as opposed to I'm saying yes because I'm scared like what might happen to me if I don't respond to this voice that is clearly talking to me right and that changed everything and so I'm so grateful I'm about to try not to cry I'm so grateful for the for that shift that he made in my life in that couple of months before starting Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur and not really knowing what we were doing and having to like, we were the most praying people in the world. What are we doing today, Jesus? <laughs> what are we doing today, Jesus? You know, it was crazy and so counterintuitive to how we had built our own businesses individually, mm -hmm. so countercultural to the way the world does business. But we had to be the very example of the thing that we were expressing. Yes. You know, and I think it's so powerful the way I think it's so powerful because it's like now it's documented. Like people say now, because now that there's been all these books sold, there's been all these things or whatever. People who show up now, there's a track record. Go back. It's all documented. You will see the you won't see the goodness of Shay. You're going to go back and see the goodness of God. You're going to see the goodness of God from 2012 mm -hmm. to now because it was all spoken, all written, all said, transparent, authentic from day one. It is his testimony. It really is. And I think that's powerful because that releases so much freedom for people in their own walk. And so I'm grateful for how he did it, even though it was not easy to do it that way, you know? I love that. That is so beautiful. Um, that is wonderful. Um, Let's take a, a shift and talk a little bit about if you go to um, your website, which yeah. we'll put it in the link in our, in our, on our podcast, but for those who are listening, kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com, mm -hmm. kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com. You have um, a wealth and I'm always excited. I, I know God has called me to it. And to be honest with you, when God called me to it, I'm like, God, there's so many people doing this. Why do I have to Can I just go do something else? I don't everybody, there's amazing big, you know, names have been doing this for 10 and 20 years, you know? And so, um, but I'm going to just be obedient, right? Like you said, and just understand my place in this. Yes. What I love is you have charted a wonderful course. You have books <clears throat> and courses, podcasts, you have mentoring, there's film, 
um, you just have this um, wonderful, amazing platform that um, people who want to be kingdom driven entrepreneurs yeah. can, can look at. I would love for you to talk about uh, your program, the, the sure. kingdom driven entrepreneur program as, as yeah. well as about, you know, what you offer there. Yeah, sure. So there's kind of a couple ways to show up if you're like intrigued about, okay, well, what does this look like to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur and how do I shift my mindset to be kingdom driven and how do I shift my heart and all of that stuff. And so we have what I consider to be like one on one foundation is called Firestarter School. And Firestarter School is actually a course. It's just it's an audio course that you can get on our website at the price of your choice. You can pay whatever. We've had people pay anywhere from fifty cents to five hundred dollars. In fact, someone's paid two thousand dollars recently. It's just like, but it's it's one of those things that it's like foundational. Here are some basic fundamental shifts and what it looks like to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur. And so that's what I consider like our 101 foundation is Firestarter School. We also have, uh, we also have a course called Grace Over Grind. So a lot of people who loved the book Grace Over Grind, the course was created because there was a lot of questions as people were trying to walk it out, like this is what it looks like to work by the infinite power of God's grace, questions would arise, you know? And so what I did is just kind of accumulate the questions that I'd, I'd start to see the themes of the things that people were asking and what they were experiencing as they were walking out this adventure and then created a course to answer a lot of those core questions on how to apply this in some really strategic areas of your business. So that's a Grace Over Grind course. But my absolute favorite, favorite thing, favorite, favorite thing, that we get to do in Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur is a, our Igniters mentoring program. Because Igniters, that's where it's like, it's not just, it's one thing to like listen to a course and be like, okay, well me and Jesus are on this path together and we're gonna do this kind of self-paced with Jesus thing. And it's a whole nother thing, it's a whole nother power when you say, I'm gonna walk with somebody and I'm gonna do this in the context of community. Mm -hmm. Because every single day, even if you say yes to this thing, every day you've got a million things coming to you in your inbox, in your ear, in your whatever, to be, to draw you back into, you know, default position where you were before. So the power of community and mentoring is that, because this is not an overnight shift, it's not an overnight thing. So when you walk with people and you can hear their stories and you could be mentored through it and also go through it with your peers, that's where we see the most powerful transformations and it becomes a lifestyle shift. And now you have family surrounding you from all over the globe with business types of all sorts, right? To walk this thing out with you. So what's cool is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you got to have your niche and who's your target audience and all of those things. And they're like, you have too broad of an audience. No, I don't. Everybody who connects, what they have in common is they have a heart for doing business as a kingdom driven entrepreneur. There are fundamentally some things, I don't care if you are a brick and mortar business owner, you own franchise restaurants, you own a bakery, you're a coach, you're a consultant, you're a whatever, it doesn't matter. There are fundamental things involved, right? In becoming a kingdom driven entrepreneur and that's what draws them all together. And then the coolness of that is then, of course, then they become community and now after they've gone through that, we're able to help them in really strategic ways in their business as well. And so that's my absolute favorite thing about what we get to do because it's, it's, it's one thing when you're broadcasting and teaching and stuff like that, you don't really know, unless people send you emails, you don't really know the impact. Those are just those things that kind of go out there and God just breathes on it. And then you've got the people who come into your life where you can actually see the fruit of people making the transformation and then see the impact that their transformation has meant for their customers, for their clients, for their families. And I mean, that's, that's priceless to me. That's amazing. And so how long is the program... Um, and how does someone like apply or be a part of yeah. it? They have to have a business. Talk about that. Do you help people sure. that are starting out or do they have to have something that's operating? Yeah. So actually we've had a number of people come in who really had, they felt like that God's called them to business, but they mm -hmm. hadn't figured out and they haven't started. Now they're the, they're the minority of the crew. Most people have already started a business, but we've had many people where their businesses were birthed. Mm -hmm after coming into Igniters. And what better way to start your business than to start your business in partnership with God? I'm like, for them, I'm like, you've got the best thing ever because you, you can start with the best foundation, you know? So I encourage more people to, to do that. But yeah, but uh, the majority tend to come in that are already business owners of, you know, a variety of experiences. And the program is six months. The first kind of the core part of Igniters 
mentoring program is for six months. But even after six months, we don't drop you off and say, have a nice life. Like you're still, we, there's still other ways that we serve even after that six months to help people in, in deeper ways in their business. And they're always a part of, you know, community. So that's how it works. But we take people through a structured six month uh, mentoring process. And is that mentoring process also teaching people business fundamentals or do you focus more on the spiritual part? Kind of what it is, is that? Not, yeah, you're not, you are not going to learn your marketing strategies in, your, in the first six months. You're not <laughs> going to focus in on I your nuts it. and bolts. All the things that you say, they are the things that you really need, but are the things that are all messed up because you don't have the foundation. Uh, you're not going to get those things in your first six months. Now, the Lord might speak to you about those things in that six months, but, but that is a fruit of yes. your growing relationship with him and learning how to make these shifts, yeah. how to be led of the Lord, how yeah. to respond to the voice of the Lord, how to seek him for strategy. Sometimes people come in and they've got this relationship with the Lord on their personal side of business. Yeah. They have no idea what that looks like as a business owner. So there's so many shifts and every single person who comes in thinking, and we tell people straight up, this is not, it says it on the page. This is not for you to come to learn marketing strategies. This, this is not that. So if that's what you're looking for, that's not this. Although you'll get that in the midst of this, right? But not because that's what we're teaching you in this, in these six months, you know? We're unapologetic about it because people that come in and they've, they realize that, wow, I've paid a lot of people to teach me a lot of these things. And some of this stuff just hasn't really been quite working or I feel like I'm over here when I should be over there. Or I don't quite feel right about some of these tactics or I just don't, you know, ah. But then when they make these fundamental shifts and learn how to actually partner with God, how to be led and empowered by God to even embrace spiritual giftings and how that works in their business, all of that stuff and cultivate all of that, then they're realizing, oh, now I've got this, now I have the foundation for success, real success over here. So many times we're looking, we're looking at, we're thinking that the answer is here and the answer is not over there. That'll all get worked out. That's actually the easiest part. Mm. People act like that's the hardest part. So they go and spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to work that part out. But that's not, that's actually not the hard part. And you can hire all kinds of help to help you. And you can do all kinds of stuff. It's, can you build it? Can you maintain it? Will it flourish? Isn't aligned with God? All of those things are the core foundations. And so it's funny. I think you'll appreciate this, Christian. It's funny because you know, some people would say, you know, with what we're doing, well, that's not really attractive because that's like, you're telling the people, you know, you're helping the, with the people, helping people with the thing that they need, but what they want is the other thing. So shouldn't you market the thing that they want and then just deliver them the thing that they need in the midst of that? No, because that's not our assignment. Our yeah. assignment is to inspire, teach, and mentor people to do business led and empowered by God. And so we'll, we're unapologetically focused on it. And so anyone who comes in the door knows that that's exactly what our focus is. We make no apologies for it. And it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. Oh, I love that. That is, it's, you know, what's interesting is, so I have kind of nascent on this, you know, whatever God's doing with uh, what we're developing. And the first class I had is called Building Kingdom Businesses. And it's all about the spiritual implications of it, how, what it looks like in the spirit, what a business looks like in the spirit, what a business operator, what it looks like from yeah. um, this, the, it, just the structure of the kingdom. It's an orderly pl place. Yes. And so it requires certain things. And, um, and I said, and I realized the first time I did this class was, which was just early in the year, someone asked me a question about their business. And I was like, I'm like, I don't, I'm not giving answers. And someone said, can I do some business coaching? I have some marketing issues. And the Lord, I said, well, let me pray about it first. Cause I'm, you know, you, you, you do this enough years, you learn to start to do that first instead of saying, okay, I got, <laughs> right, right. I got answers. I know marketing, you know, it's like, okay, no, no, no. Right. Yeah. Cause you yeah. know, there's a grace on certain things. That's you right. It out. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not as, yep stupid as a look, you know, I learned eventually. Yes. And so, and God said, no, he said, no, because the whole point of the class, which is kind of getting to what you're saying is to connect people to their identity in Christ. Yes. And to hearing the voice of God for themselves. And I yes. told you this, you will not learn business in this class and it's, you will not, I'm not teaching about marketing. I'm not teaching about operations. If you want your money back, that's great. But also right. I'm not giving you advice. Right. I will not, I don't care if you're in the middle of something tomorrow, I am giving you tools to go before your father and pull yes. down your scroll and yes. learn how to read your scroll for yourself. Even if yes. you're not a prolific seer, even if you don't have visions, if you can't hear, see, so someone said, well, I can't hear, see, 
think I said, well, then you shouldn't be doing kingdom business. If you have no ability to connect with God at all, that's the first step is to work on that. Yes. Right? Because yes, you, you can't say we're doing kingdom business. You can't hear, see, smell, touch. Taste. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, here's some foundation for yeah. you. you focus it work on, on that. that. Right. And here's need, where it's time for this. Yes. Yeah. Because you need an ability to hear from God in order to do this God's way. Right. Yeah. And so you can't have call your friend or get a seer or dial a friend every single time there's a business decision. Just that's like right. Thing. That's and right. So, um, that's really, that's the impulse. Like he said, I'm not setting you up to be a guru. Right. Right. I'm not setting not you right. up to have all the answers. Jesus is the guru. Right. Jesus is the guru. So right? <laughs> because what I would tell you is probably the textbook business school right answer, yes. but it's the absolute wrong thing to do. That's right. And that's, and that's what I do when I see God on my strategy and I tell people, if you can't hear and you're not seeing these massive visions in the courts, if I, write it down. I have to yes. do this, this manufacturer, this one or this one. Write down your, your issues, almost like, like treat Jesus like he's part of the board. Yes. And you say, you know, write it down. And That's then just right. go into prayer, get into worship and just circle. Yes, no, this one or this one, A, B, C. And you just start with those small, basic ways. Yes. To help you just kind of be led by the spirit. You can do that on a week basis, on a day That's basis. Right big strategic decisions, hiring and firing, you know, service providers. That is, that is where it is. And I think people yes. want to learn all the stuff they think everybody else knows as their competitive yes. advantage. Yes. When the truth is your competitive advantage is your book and your scroll because Come God on. is on that. Yes. Right. And that's that is, where we want to be. Yeah. That's where we want to so be. So that is yes. beautiful. That is beautiful. So if you're, so if you're not clear on this by now, like you should realize <laughs> that there's really not, uh, there's not nearly enough people that are helping people in this way, just to okay. be clear. Like there's okay. not nearly enough. Okay. I mean, to me, there's not, there's I mean, this is about eight years in and there's, there have been people talking about faith and work for a really long time. Even yeah. the basic conversation of faith integrated with work, it's mm -hmm. still like a brand new concept with people. Forget Holy Spirit. Forget scrolls and all that you're talking about. Forget that. Just the basics. I'm going to school, guys. She's, right. she's of faith and work is still like <laughs> fundamentally a shift for a lot of people. So yeah. that means that there is not, there is no... This, the, this, these should be the things that saturate the market. These sh yeah. should be the things that saturate the market. Honestly, yeah. there's not nearly, nearly enough. So I may get you into trouble. Answer this to the extent you want to. Um, this is a, more of a controversial platform, so you can say literally whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just take you a little far. Okay. What do you think is out there? You know, like what is your assessment of a lot of what? And this is honestly for me, because I have, okay. what is your okay. assessment of a lot of what's in the Christian market for kingdom entrepreneurs? What, what is that they're offering and, and why, what's your critique of that? Well, I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of kind of boxes that are available, right? You have, you have a lot of boxes in the space of, we are Christians who do business with integrity. We do business based off of the word of God. Um, heavily probably proverbs focused you know this is how we do business and that's good like that's way better than not doing business by the book right so you have there's there's whole movements and conferences and all of those things based off of christian business right mm -hmm. then you have conversations not a whole lot but there's also conversations around what does kingdom business and there's still a whole lot of not not even of, of not there's not even a lot of knowledge, understanding, and revelation on the difference of what I, what I mean when I say a Christian business owner versus a kingdom business owner, but yet they are different, right? So you have some of that, but not a lot of that, to be honest, right? We, there's a lot more of like, let's take the principles, let's take the principles of the King of Kings and let's apply those to our businesses. And which, which to me is kind of like the, we're doing business for the glory of God. You know, it's kind of, we're doing business for the glory of God. We are Christian. We want to shine a light through what we're doing in business. And to me, if you're a kingdom driven entrepreneur, you are in the business with God mm -hmm. category. It's not, I'm not just doing business for the glory of God and based off of his principles, but I am doing business with, in partnership with, in relationship with like a real God, you know, in the presence of God. And that, and, and yes, that reveals his glory on the earth. You can reveal his glory on the earth, doing it for the glory of God too. 
but how much more can you experience doing it with God, right? And so there's a lot more in the category of doing business for the glory of God, is how I'll say it, and a lot less of doing business really in partnership with God. And so I'm excited. And so all of it's good, mm -hmm. right? All of it's good. And then even in the, and then in the midst of that, you'll get some things that are start to get even more niche, which would probably be in the category of what you're talking about. Most people, if you had a conversation you, and you said what you said, you said your scroll, they'd be like, what are you talking about? What do you mean my scroll? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you said my scroll, like if you said my scroll to me four years ago, I would have had no idea what you meant. Wow. And I was already doing kingdom driven entrepreneur just yeah. to be clear. Yeah. So I would have no, I would have had no reference point. Even the concept of the courts, courtrooms of heaven came from a prophetic word from three different people in my life. And I never even heard the phrase courtrooms yeah. of heaven. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? I didn't even know what they were talking about. And then I picked up a book and I'm like, what is this talking about? And then I had to pick up another. And then it was just like, okay, <laughs> Lord, you're going to have to break this down for me because that was new for me. Yeah. So it's like, there's all types of aspects. And so I honor all the various ways that people are showing up as, you know, as they're led, because anything that brings us into more focus on, on something that's rooted in the King of Kings is a good thing. It's a good thing. But I believe that the way, as, as the world, as the world moves, that there's going to be a demand on kingdom focused, kingdom minded, kingdom enabled and empowered business people. It will not be enough yeah. to simply say, I'm a Christian who happens to run a business. Not in the, not in the, because you can grind and you can do things in, by the power of your own strength as a, I'm a Christian and I'm doing this business with my skills and my abilities that I'm, give, that I'm yielding to the Lord and doing this for the glory of God. But there's things, there's like things that like there's secrets, there's yeah. things that are available in a whole nother realm that um, if you're just saying I'm a Christian business owner doing things for the glory of God that you're not even tapped into. You miss it. It passed you by. It might have even landed on someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. Yes. Say that. He's preaching, guys. Did I say that? That so is so saying, good. If we're saying, like, we're going to yeah. be revealers of God's glory on the earth. Right. If we're saying that we're going to be a like we should be walking signs, wonders and miracles as business owners, as as corporate professionals, wherever you are, wherever God has planted you, whatever your assignment is, that that should be the thing, you know, and that doesn't happen if we're not doing it with him. If we're not tapped into the, the a higher realm, which is the real realm and the one that we're looking at right now. Right. And so I think that, so to me, I honor all of it and I think all of it is important, but I believe that the times are upon us that we need way more, way more of shifts from doing, th from doing things for the glory of God or doing things based off of the principles of God to actually operating with the presence of God, right? Led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that would be my general commentary. Oh my gosh. I love it. I, I am so like for, I know there are people out here who are just going to be pumped up. I am super pumped. Like, these are exciting like, times. This is exciting, but it just yeah. feels like you are, there's just so much power and authority with what you're saying that I'm just like this. I think this is a good time to, to end. I know you have um, a meeting, meeting in three minutes. <laughs> yeah. A meeting. Exactly. I'm just going to say, um, if this is speaking to you and you are excited about what Shay's doing, you can go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com. She has books, tons of books, resources. She has a podcast. It is just filled with stuff. And her Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Mentorship Program can fast track you to where you need to go. I would love to connect later on because I just think sure, that what that. you're doing is amazing. And I, I really am super excited. And I'm so thankful for having, for you just giving me a little bit of your time to talk to me. Uh, absolutely. Really honored to be here. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> awesome. Have a blessed day, everyone. Um, thank you for t tuning into the podcast. We will see you again next month. God bless. Bye. God bless. You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like our video, and share this with friends. 
This podcast is a production of Bride Ministries International. Visit our website at brideministriesinternational.com to enjoy the Bride Ministries Church, the Bride Ministries Institute, free resources, and to support us financially.